Welcome back to the second video on autoencoders. We have seen the theory in the first class. Uh, now what we are going to see is how you can actually implement a simple autoencoder in MATLAB. Uh, for this, what you will need is a uh, latest copy of MATLAB. And uh, you will also need to have some basic understanding of uh, coding in MATLAB. It's not very difficult to understand. Um, what I have also done is I have also uploaded the code uh, online. Uh, you will find the link to the code uh, in the links below. Uh, what I will do is I'll go through the code that I that has been uh, made and I'll try to uh, explain step by step on how this whole uh, system auto encoder works. Uh, as you can see, uh, the first step that we are doing is uh, we are uh, loading the uh, the 4D array data of handwritten digits. This is MNIST data set which uh, has got a series of handwritten digits. It's a very uh, popular uh, data set. Uh, so in MATLAB, this is a built-in data set and if you actually want to just use this data set, all you have to do is use this particular command. It will automatically get loaded. You do not have to go to any uh, loading process additionally. So what we are doing now is we have uh, two parts, training data and the testing data. Both of them are loaded into two different uh, sets of uh, cell arrays. Please remember that we are talking about uh, data as images. So what we have here is data in the form of a cell array. Okay, each cell can have uh, multiple dimensions. And as you can see here, uh, you will have uh, the training data, which is coming in here. X train and X text you can see here on the uh, on the left hand side at the bottom the data set that is available to you and uh, what we will do next is we'll just uh, display some of the uh, images just to show what it actually contains so what we are doing is uh, here we are just uh, picking some random images from the uh, handwritten digit data set and just displaying them and please remember that the images that you find in this particular data set are all of dimensions 28 cross 28 so basically you have uh, only very very tiny images and that is why when you view them on a larger scale they appear to be pixelated too much but that's okay because they are kind of very small images. They're easier to work with for, uh, for us, uh, especially on systems which have low computational capacity. It's good to work with smaller images because we are just worried about learning concepts, not actually doing some very high performance computing tasks. So uh, what you see here are the randomly generated images. And as you can see, some images are very easy to identify. Some images are slightly more complicated. Uh, so the next step in doing this is um, to get the 4D image data and convert it into a cell array. Because a typically uh, autoencoder function in uh, MATLAB, basically it's an autoencoder class that has been implemented in MATLAB. Uh, you, it's very easy to work with and you can do it in just a couple of lines of command uh, but it requires you to input the data in a particular format so in this particular case we are actually trying to convert the data into a cell array which will be used as an input so you can see here uh, this these three lines of code that you are seeing here will convert the uh, data that has been loaded into the memory into a cell array Next, what we are doing is we are basically uh, setting how many number of neurons do you want in the hidden layer. We are considering only one single hidden layer and we have put um, 
the size of the hidden neurons as 100. So you will have 100 neurons in the hidden layer. Um, and the next step is to use this built-in function, which is in MATLAB available to you. Uh, it's a part of the autoencoder class. So what it requires you to do is to just specify what training data is needed, how many number of hidden neurons you want, and how long does the training have to be carried on. All the other parameters are uh, default parameters. You can leave them as it is if you are not much bothered about it. And they don't seem to have a lot of negative impact on uh, how the system converges to its final solution also. Um, the larger the number of epochs you use, uh, slightly better will be the uh, uh, results. Sometimes if the data set is very uh, small or does not have a lot of uh, variation, it will converge a lot faster than that. Um, now what we are doing next is we are just plotting what the weights are able to learn. So as you can see here, the after training, the train autoencoder function is used for training the autoencoder and the autoencoder trained object is auto ENC. So the weights of auto ENC represent what aspects of the data has been learned by the autoencoder. As you can see, different uh, weights are learning different, different things. Okay, and as you can see, the number of hidden neurons that we had was 100. So you can see here, this is a 10 cross 10 matrix. So you will have 100 representations of different aspects of the data that has been input to it. So you can see some of them are like squiggles, some of them are straight lines, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Now what we will do is we will try to find out how good the system is able to reconstruct the uh, inputs. So what we do is we uh, take the test data and you can see it's called white test and we just randomly display some of the images in the test data sets and you can see that the test data set is not very different from the training data set. So what we do is uh, because the data that gets loaded is again a 4D data set. So we have to convert that again into a cell array. And this is what you do to convert the data set into a cell array. And once that is done, uh, the next step that you have to do is you have to take every single image from the testing data, pass it through the autoencoder, and the predict function will give you the predicted output or the reconstructed output. That is moved into the testing data reconstructed and when you plot this, the result that you will be getting is something like this. So you will find that the uh, reconstruction results in slightly poorer reconstructed images. So if you see the uh, training set and the testing set looked like this, which was very, not very, but relatively uh, understandable but if you see the reconstructed images you find that they are slightly poorer uh, why is this very useful because you are getting a uh, poorer image anyway so the reason why we are interested in this is because uh, the performance of this network will not degrade significantly even if you give inputs that are noisy. So removal of noise and stability to noise is one of the major reasons why we go for this type of a network. We will see that in the next example and uh, we will also see uh, other variants of autoencoders. So uh, please stay tuned for uh, sparse autoencoders followed by uh, stacked autoencoders and uh, denoising autoencoders. And uh, please like and subscribe.